Good morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, but the person you're here to see is Pastor Chris Hall. How you doing, Pastor? Oh, Brother Goodman, I am always fantastic. If I was any better, I'd be you. Oh, man, aim way higher, my friend. Just aim exactly. way Like higher. I say every time, I already swung for the fences and I hit it. So there we go. Uh, in your car? Did you? Are, are you actually driving? Yeah, it's, it's I the Holy Spirit. I actually was in the passenger seat. Jesus took the wheel, but then he brought me back and said, you're united with me in a death like mine, so you better drive yourself too. So I'm like, fine. All right, Jesus. So Sorry, it's Carrie one Underwood. time. The catechism drove me instead of Carrie Underwood. You know, I guess that might be all right. Yeah. I guess that's a different podcast though, right? You bring like someone, that's Patty Boy. He does the cultural stuff. He can talk about Carrie Underwood. I'm anything to avoid talking about country music and I'm okay with it. Uh, we can just leave that, leave that where it belongs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Under the truck when Jesus took the wheel. So uh, <laughs> instead of that, tell me a story. Well, I was thinking the other day, you know, we have all these wars going on. You have, you have Russia and the Ukraine. And then there's always these questions as to, you know, like if people are even saying here in America, you know, I'm not in the Ukraine or in Russia, but I want to fight for freedom. So I'm going to just go over there and be like a, almost like a vigilante or something, you know, like Batman, um, but no cape. Exactly. No cape, no thing. And you're not cool. Um, like Batman. <laughs> and then you have <laughs> like, even look in America itself, you have uh, the, the discussion of Roe versus Wade being overturned. And people are like, could that start a civil war, some type of outbreak, people fighting. And it got me thinking about war and how Christians approach it. And, since we talked about Luther last time, I figured we go a couple hundred years earlier to the late 10 hundreds uh, to the okay. Crusades. Can we always call them the 10 hundreds? We always call them the 10 hundreds. That's what I do. It's the 10 hundreds. I got docked for points at seminary for, but I'm not going to learn. It's been years now. I'm not changing. So <laughs> in the 2000s, you have the 10 hundreds. That's what we do. So it's good stuff. <laughs> you have the 11 hundreds, 12 hundreds, the 10 hundreds. Right. Why not the 10? Exactly. So you have in the mid 10th century, no 11th century, right? You have the Islamic forces taking Jerusalem and they start going up the coast. I mean, they start going up, they're going toward Greece, the Byzantine empire, which is the East remnants of the Eastern Roman empire are freaking out because these guys are coming and you begin having the Western church thinking about how can we, so it's a good intention to start. How can we defend our Eastern Christian brothers from this Islamic horde? And it really hits with this guy named urban. The second he's Pope and he holds a couple councils and he says, we have to go and retake the Holy land. So our Christians can be protected when they take pilgrimages there and everybody's safe. So before he can get guys with armies to go, this dude named Peter the Hermit in France, this uh, priest, starts preaching about it, and he gets a bunch of people to come with him. And they actually made some good progress, and then they all kind of got annihilated. Um, didn't go well for them. It's a bummer. After this, Urban II gets a few guys from France, and they get their armies, and they march. They get to the Byzantine Empire, Constantinople, and they're really hesitant to welcome these guys in because, yes, they're fellow Christians. But remember, there's also been the great schism already, the division between the Eastern and Western churches in the 1050s. So it's not like they're all holding hands and singing Kumbaya or climb every mountain. They're not doing that. So they're hesitant. But they say, no, 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 we're not here to kill you. We're here to kill other people. Like, OK, go. Oh, it's fine then. So they go all the way. They end up taking Jerusalem. This is the late 1090s. Guy named... Uh, Oh, what was his name? Bald. No, jo Jeffrey, G-E-O, like Godfrey, basically. I'd say Godfrey, Geodfrey. I don't really know how to pronounce his name that well. But they retake Jerusalem, and there's a kingdom of Jerusalem starting in 1099. And it lasts 50-something years until it's retaken by a guy named Saladin, Islamic um, sultan, retakes it. And the Crusades just keep on happening. You have Richard the Lionheart. I think he's probably the most famous crusader everybody knows from Robin Hood and everything like that. He never retook Jerusalem, came close to doing it, had some good fights. But it gets you thinking about the Crusades, 
What started it was this good intention to protect Christians on their pilgrimage to the Holy Land. It didn't end with that. Um, it never just was limited to that. So the question is, in this little narrative of history, can Christians ever have a war without the old Adam having some type of little bit of influence? Right. Because this is kind of the criticism of the Crusades is whatever you say that you were doing, religious, whatever, it was a whole bunch of people that went into another country, got very wealthy doing it and, and slaughtered a lot of people. Like, why is that okay? Just because you stamp a cross on it. Right. Sorry, I think I just got a call on my phone, but I muted it. So we're good to go. But that's driving and having a podcast, right? It happens. I love it. <laughs> but the thing is, we have this concupiscent nature that St. James brings up in his epistle. The anger of man never produces the righteousness that God requires. We always have to, can there be a holy war? Sure. But having that is extremely difficult. Being able to say, I take out any notion of my fallen nature in order to carry out the will of God is very difficult impossible <laughs> because the old animal always money will always have a play the view of the world will always have influence all these things will influence it you can never say that's gone it's always there and history teaches us this the beginning of the crusades had some good intentions let's do this but as the years went on it kept dwindling and dwindling to the point where yeah it wasn't really about god protecting our fellow christians it became other things that was still there, but other things came into it as well. So we always have to be hesitant and realize our own depravity, but also realize you can fight all you want here, but are you fighting for something because you think it's going to endure? Hmm. For what do we fight? We only fight for that which we love and that which we love is the gospel. We fight for the gospel. How do you fight for it? You fight in the same way Christ fought for it and that's to die. <laughs> You die. For so, it. I mean, it's it's a big different thing to say. Um, this is an important place because Jesus did things here versus I need to be here right now or else I can't be a real Christian. The, the gospel, right. actually, the gift of it is that the word can be preached in all nations, the sacraments administered, and those are the things worth suffering for. Right. And that, that can then help us define, because there's a lot of other Christian wars. You don't have just the Crusades. You have the 30 years war. Right, fought from the 1610 teens all the way through the 1640s between Roman Catholics and Lutherans or Protestant, you know, and it, you have a, a death surrounding it. Um, you have one of some hymns were sung as they marched into battle. How do we understand that? Luther wrote, Can a soldier too be saved? All these questions come up because you look at what's going on and you have the questions. So, the best thing is anyone who's listening. If you want to know the best about the Crusades, don't just go on Wikipedia and read about it. The best thing is get, get books and get diverse books written by real historians that have studied it. Um, I'd say in our own Missouri Synod, Matt Phillips is probably the best guy on that at Concordia, Seward, or Nebraska. I don't know what they call it nowadays. It's still Seward, I think, yeah. Yeah. you didn't, No, you went to Illinois State. That's right. You didn't go yeah, to Yeah, I'm a That's filthy right. pagan. Um, That's right. Well, we know that we don't like talking about it too much, in the, except enough. when you're not around. I like that. Yeah, it's safer. But for my read, read good Christian perspectives on the Crusades, on the Thirty Years War, because we also have the understanding of man's depravity and inevitably, no, it's all about Christ. So I'm not called to fight for Christ. I'm called to come. Well, Christ bids us come and die, like Bonhoeffer said. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God for that. Right, because that, that lets us sort of keep the, the gospel in the forefront and recognize that if there is such a depravity of man, two things are going to happen. One, God's going to need to curb that with a sword somewhere. This is where we have governments established. Um, but also right. at the same time, we can recognize that the people inside of them are also sinners and, and are going to suffer. And so we have, you know, on, on one hand, I think there's there's so many good movies about like this religious zealotry that, that's gone astray um, or, or even the, the kind that stay pure, like the classic, you know, Boondock Saints, where they're just they're doing the thing and you look at it from far you're like is it though um but you have the other side of the coin which is pacifism which right. still might not necessarily be a, a, a entirely godly approach right well and that's the thing think of christ dying he died for you 
He died so that you may not suffer the wrath of the father. So pacifism most of the time comes to, I just don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with this and I don't want to suffer it. And that's the thing is that's different than giving up, like John 10 says, giving up everything for the life of others. So we give up our life for the life of the other. When someone else is suffering, we give up our life for them. It's not in pursuit of killing the other. It's in pursuit of sacrificing for our neighbor. So I think that's the middle one, right? Both of the other two are world, worldly ways of doing it. Instead of what is the Christian called to do, you're called to, in your vocation, do all you can for the life of your neighbor. And whatever that may look like at that given time, God has given it to you. Um, so yeah, if you and I end up in Boston one day, you never know. We could be the next Boondog Saints. You know, it'd be a fun time. Um, wow. But <laughs> bring some rope. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the neighbor then actually lets us answer along with Luther can soldiers to be saved well yeah especially if they're fighting for their neighbor but mostly because Christ has died for them because they are baptized right. and that's what's salvific not their fighting um yeah. and it also lets us confront martyrdom with the idea that it, it's not a rush to be martyred uh but if if, if Christ so wills it that that my life be spent for the gospel um i'd like to think i'd sing God be praised on the way out uh, I might pee a little but that's that's we'll talk about oh. that later We'll get um, some big diapers. I need them too. But when it comes to the good of my neighbor, uh, there is somebody to fight for because God has said their, their life is, is worth his life. Right. And it's those that God has put in your life. Mm -hmm. My vocation is whoever God puts in my life, I lay down my life for them. Why? Not because it saves me, but because Christ has already done it for me. So my life is lost in his wounds. Thanks be to God for that. So were the crusades fully that? No. Were there bits of it that were that? Yes. So we can rejoice in that, but then see the rest of it as a warning not to do this. So it's fun times, man. History is always what? That that Christ working out his relationship with his creation. So, and man, most of the time gets it wrong, but that's okay because Christ is making it perfect unto the last day. I love it. It's what makes these stories worth hearing. Thanks so much for sharing one with me. Hey, thanks for having me on again. It's fun times, man. I love it. I'll do it again. All right, take All care, right. Take it easy, man. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.